Okay, sorry, Flor. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Florian Gagné from uh, SAGI, and this is Victor Harry. We are both uh, DevOps engineers uh, at SAGI. Uh, our main goal uh, is to uh, install, maintain, and secure the infrastructure of the SAGI product, uh, either on the cloud, the public cloud, or uh, from uh, our physical servers. Um, we are going to present you today uh, the love story of story between Ansible and Rudder, but it's quite not uh, only your love story. Okay, so um, Pauv, to, to begin, um, with a quick context. Oh, sorry. Oop. So, um, at Sagi, we have mainly, um, our product is deploying on the platform, a uh, pretty complex platform. Uh, each platform consists in uh, at least 30 servers to be installed. Uh, and they all interact between themselves. They are some are cluster clusterets or are not. Uh, they are secured with hardware on VLAN uh, to allow customers to work on their item on, on inside their teams without thinking about uh, security. So to operate and dis install all of that, we need automation. So it's where our job begins. Uh, to install new customer, to reinstall a platform with the POC hands, and to manage all existing infrastructure and, of course, update the stack on the product. Uh, as we have a large ecosystem with Kubernetes, with Hadoop, Mesos, Zookeeper, we also install database, uh, depending uh, what the option the customer chose. Uh, all this stack also interact between themselves and needs to be secured and configured. So to do that, we have many challenges that we have to tackle at Sagi. Uh, the first one is to assume the installation of bare metal servers. Uh, uh, from the local to the cloud. Uh, as I said before, we have to install uh, our servers on HPE moonshots cartridges. We have to install them on uh, the cloud such as OVH and some uh, on a public cloud like the GCP or uh, Azure One, etc. The second big challenge is to deploy our solution from the OS to the product. That is, we use Foreman for our local deployments. Then we use, um, we have to install all the SAGI products on it. Uh, what Victor just said, in fact, all the uh, Cloudera um, uh, operating system, uh, all the tools, the databases, the monitoring, the backups, etc. Uh, and the first, uh, the third deal uh, is to manage all the clients and the product specifications. And we have a lot of speci uh, specifications. We have clients that are totally offline. We have to manage, to manage them and keep updating them. Uh, we have multiple versions in production. Some clients run the SAGI product in production, and they don't want to upgrade uh, each month, for example. And we have clients with proxies, uh, and these ones are very hard for us to, to manage. Uh, our first tool to do all this, do all this installation is on Ansible. Um, the first tool that was used to do the operation, the operation uh, at SAGI. Why? Because it's easy to use. There are plenty full of modules. You can do everything you want. Uh, you can manage uh, network systems. You can do only the servers, configurations. Uh, you can uh, work on local servers, on public clouds. You can do nearly everything you want. Uh, moreover, if you are not satisfied by this, um, you can customize uh, your, own mod uh, your own modules and develop if you if you want to. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, consider uh, interactions, like, like I said before. Uh, the last thing concerning a server is that it's very scalable. You can deploy a lot of servers, thousands of servers simultaneously uh, if you want to. Uh, if you can speed up with uh, this with uh, Mitogen, for example, if you want to uh, be much more effective and uh, I think as I said this uh, before, but you can do everything you want. Yeah. Okay, so as a, a summary, Ansible is currently a tool of choice for us. Uh, it allows us to install everything everywhere. Uh, we may set up all servers from the basis to the complex stack. We are able to add requirements when needed for our customers, uh, and we are able to configure our product directly. 
but the problem is uh, it also has this defect. Uh, and currently, uh, we have more than 100 of walls. Uh, it has been developed by a developer a team before the SOE teams uh, arrive at SAGI. So there is uh, some bad practice when first created, a uh, lot of playbook, a huge history to manage. And uh, no, it's not uh, automatable. I precise in SAGI context, not a non problem, a SAGI problem. Uh, on our infrastructure also has its own problem as we have uh, appliance, uh, cloud, SAGI cloud, etc. So we have some history to manage uh, at this point also. So this is where the SRO teams are begin in the SAGI history. So as you can see, we need a standardization, a lot of standardization. In two big pictures, the first one is for the recurring task. We need to simplify this recurring task. If I take an example, um, to deploy a uh, SSH key uh, some months ago, it could take more than uh, two hours for only one SSH key when a coworker arrives or got, uh, got out of SAGI. It, it's very, very, very long to do that manually. Uh, it could hardly be optimized because of some historical uh, issues. So we needed to simplify that, really. Um, the second point is to get rid of the potential issues. Before the SRE uh, team arrives, um, we had a lot of manual uh, modifications uh, that has been done manually on the servers. Uh, it was a real pain. And we needed to standardize all the existing platforms because we had for two different clients with the same SAGI version, the configuration was not strictly the same and it was um, really hard to manage for a little team of the project. And the second uh, picture is all about the operational. We needed to get back to structure mastery to uh, enhance all the access reliability. Uh, it's the same example for the, the SSH accesses. And we need to improve the consistency and the big deal was the last point. Uh, we had to reduce our operation time because we are only uh, four in the team and we have a lot of servers uh, on our rudder, it's about uh, nearly a uh, thousand of servers, virtual machines or uh, physical servers. And it's quite hard to do uh, for us. So uh, our choice to answer this, ch this new challenge is uh, water. Why water? Uh, mainly because it's uh, very easy to use, it's light, it's uh, agent-oriented, so contrary to Ansible, we are able to install something on the server and have report. Uh, there is also a wide OS uh, compatibility, uh, and it's also pretty robust. Uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, it, allows, uh, it, allo it allows us sorry, new possibility like uh, change tracking, very important in our context, to see what change, check compliance at any time. Uh, we are able to deploy new features uh, very easily and do massive modification in any time, uh, contrary to the, for example, the SSH key before, we now are able to change an SSH key in five or 10 minutes on the whole infrastructure. And also, uh, we are able to test and roll back uh, very easily with an uh, with Rudder, sorry, uh, thanks to the um, Git uh, directly integrated in Rudder. Uh, we have so able to version and have a compliance report to gain visibility for other people outside of the SRE. Thanks to Rudder, we are able to see, look, this server has this problem and has changed as uh, this date, etc. Here you can see uh, that's the beginning of the last story between Radar and Sybil. And let me explain why. It's I'm a bit spoiling what, he, what he's following. First, we use Ansible. Ansible is used to deploy, after the foreman has deployed the operating system, Ansible is used to install our Proxmox hypervisors, or uh, Ansible is using uh, the API of OVH to deploy our servers. Okay. Each hypervisor server came with uh, Rudder agent that is ready to be accepted on Rudder. The second step, Rudder is uh, as the not accepted and is going to do the basic setup. Is going to uh, configure the SSDs, is going to do the basic securization, to install the monitoring, the backups, 
uh, and install some uh, some softwares. Then Ansible again, uh, Ansible comes on the hypervisors. Based on its inventory, it creates all the virtual machines. It configures them. Each virtual machine comes same as, as the hypervisors with uh, a radar agent that is doing the basic securization. And finally, we use Ansible to deploy all of our product to do um, uh, the installation of the databases, the data lakes, uh, the Kubernetes cluster, the Ceph cluster, uh, everything you everything you can imagine. And the last step is about 80% of our time. So we had not so much time to do that. So we are starting to migrate uh, everything we have in our uh, hundreds of Ansible rows into Rudder to simplify it and to be much more flexible and reduce the operation time. So, uh, as you have noticed, this is not uh, the perfect world. So why? Uh, one of the biggest problems uh, at first is the uh, inventory. Ansible needs an inventory to run, to know which to install, to know which server to install, the network information, and so on. Uh, it, no it needs to know the network information what to deploy, where to deploy, and all the functions specific. Uh, and so, to, uh, to have this inventory, we have the possibility to use Rudder as a, a non-zable inventory plugin. But the problem is, we cannot do that because to use Rudder as inventory, uh, nodes has to be um, registered in Rudder. So it's an infinite loop. We use Ansible to deploy the nodes, but we need the inventory to deploy the nodes. But to use Rudder as an inventory, we need to have the node already in Rudder. So it's one of two problems that explain why we have this uh, chicken and eggs problem. And it's something uh, we are working on. Uh, to be more precise, uh, what we have seen before is the current state after some months of work. So we are currently improving this. So we have to automate the acceptance of the nodes. So what about the inventories? We have two ways. The first one is to use back Ansible. Uh, in Ansible, we have the inventory to create all the virtual machines. So we use Ansible to call the Rudder API to only accept the nodes that are registered in Rudder and that are in, in, a, in the Ansible inventory. Why? Because we don't want some virtual machines that are uh, started with other persons, with other co-workers, to, um, to get the benefits of the rules that we have configured to be secured uh, with some of our custom rules, etc. We don't want that, so we call only Ansible for that. And the second way for the people we, we don't want uh, to use Ansible, uh, it's only for testing. We use the radar interface uh, to accept the, the servers manually. And for the nodes, for we have some colleagues that are doing some tests, for example, on our uh, firewalls uh, to accept the payload sets manually, in fact. Um, one of the other biggest problem we have that prevent you us uh, using water directly and massively using water is a security problem. Indeed, uh, alors, until recently, water uh, used unsafe protocol. Uh, not totally, it's, uh, it uses um, already HTTPS to um, send inventories, uh, inventories from the reader part, not uh, Ansible or inventories of Node, but all the report reader sent from uh, its agent. But all promises, all things uh, generated in the reader server and sent to the, um, to the agent to be configured are in clear text. And as we had said, uh, as we have appliance, uh, offline system, uh, some, sometimes uh, uh, server installed directly in the data center uh, for the customer, uh, we need to add a secure network um, over Rudder, uh, which add a complexity stack. Fortunately, it's now solved in Rudder 6, uh, so everything is using HTTPS. It's, no, it's still some work to do because the upgrade notably is not smoothly between the Rudder 5 and the Rudder 6. But uh, now uh, it allows us to really migrate everything that is in the old Ansible role and playbook to Rudder. So it's, 
I guess, the, the main month's work uh, for us. So we have finished with our presentation. We wanted before uh, going through the questions um, to thank uh, two of our colleagues, Roman Brucker and um, Guillaume Trelez, that have uh, actively worked uh, very hard in 2019, uh, all the year, to get uh, this reality back. Uh, welcome to the, to the 20th uh, century. Do you have any questions? Yeah, so the question is, um, are we using building a directive in order or we own uh, uh, the fact is both? We use some basic, uh, basic technique, uh, notably for SSH key, but to install many packages or compile some user information, uh, we use our own technique we have written. Another question, perhaps? Yes? Uh, in fact, the main problem is not for the um, uh, physical server, but for the virtual server. As we use on the bill, we use as an API server on which the Proxmox API to create the virtual machine. And to do that, we need to know uh, the name of the virtual machine up to um, on which hypervisor has clustered, on which hypervisor uh, it's needed which RAM, quantity, etc. Uh, and so I forgot, but the question was um, why not using uh, the information from the server to, to as an inventory? That's why. Uh, at the moment, we need to create the machine. We do not know, uh, we do not have this information, in fact. And perhaps we can discuss later about that, but... Uh, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Perhaps not. Yes? In fact, uh, it was very long to do the demonstration of the, the adding or the removing the removal of the SSH key with Antibot because we had to run it in every data center. In fact, we had and we have, uh, we still have a very difficult, uh, very complex, uh, with a lot of IP overlap. Uh, we use uh, ASSH to uh, do complex proxies to route our traffic. So we had to do that, that changes uh, in manually for certain servers because of the clients with proxies. It was very complex, but rather use HTTP collection. So it can go through the proxies for the clients and for uh, all the servers be, uh, that are uh, re really complex to reach, uh, rather goes directly to the web and reaches our uh, server to detect. Uh, 